Inside of the concentration camps, prisoners came from all walks of life. Regardless of someone's job or background, if they fitted into the Nazis' criteria for inmates, they were rounded up and deported there. Inside Auschwitz, the horrors of the Holocaust were played out, and it became the largest centre used by the SS, and because of this, hundreds of thousands were killed there. The gas chambers were being used on a daily basis, with thousands being sent to their deaths. If prisoners weren't fit enough to work inside the camp, they were almost immediately sent to their deaths, and today we look at one of these men who were murdered inside of Auschwitz. Eddie Hamill had an interesting career in life before he entered the concentration camp. He was a footballer who played for Ajax, however the Germans had very little regard for this, just seeing him for his ethnicity. Today we look at the horrific execution of Eddie Hamill, the footballer of Auschwitz, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Eddie Hamill was an American-born football player, born in New York City on the 21st of October 1902. He had American citizenship and was Jewish. His mother and father had moved from the Netherlands to settle. They moved the year before Eddie was born. His father Moses was a diamond polisher and he must have found it hard to come by work in his native land. In his teenage years the family moved to Amsterdam, however Eddie had his first taste of football. In his youth he played for Amsterdam FC and he had been noticed by bigger clubs such was his skill. Eddie Hamill was approached by the biggest club in the Netherlands, Ajax, to play for them. At the time, Ajax were incredibly popular, and Hamill became the first American-born player to compete in a top-flight European league. He spent nine years with Ajax, and was nicknamed the ringleader for his skill. He played on the right wing, and was known for being a very quick winger, who was also a good dribbler of the ball. He would cross the ball into the box, in the hope that the striker would finish the chance off. At the time, the football ground in Amsterdam was overcrowded, with fans wanting to see his skill, and at half-time the crowd would swap sides of the ground to focus on his attacking play. He has been compared to David Beckham in terms of the way he played, and he went on to play 125 games for Ajax over nine years, scoring eight goals. The club of Ajax itself celebrates theirs and the city of Amsterdam's Jewish heritage, and at the time of the Second World War, the city was home to 140,000 Jews. Hamel was a first-team regular, and was the first Jewish player to ever play for Ajax. He was a very talented player, and before the war was noted to have been a very skilled player, and his own fan club even emerged in the 1920s. During the 1926-1927 season, Hamel scored five goals, and in August 1929 he married his wife Joanna in a synagogue in Amsterdam. The following year he set up the first goal in a 6-0 win for Ajax, however he then suffered a bad injury. He injured his knee and never played for the squad again. He was a success on the field and was very popular, but was never paid. European clubs at the time were unpaid and the players received no money, being forced to take a normal job to support their family. They weren't professional and Hamel was forced to take work as a clerk at a grain wholesaler, and after his injury he had to take more hours. In 1932, he started to coach two lower league clubs. One of these was in a fishing village outside of Amsterdam, and the other was in Alkmaar. This is all around the time that Hitler starts to rise to power in Germany, becoming the Chancellor of Germany, before he seizes overall control of the country. Eddie and his wife had two children, and by this point Hamel was coaching two teams and being paid some money for this, with one club even paying him in fish to feed his family. He was a good coach. When he was at Alkmaar, the club won the league. Also, another club he worked at won three league titles in ten years when he worked there, and locals lauded Hamill as a hero and the man who changed everything for the team. The Second World War broke out on September 1st, 1939, when Germany invaded Poland. The invasion was quick, swift and brutal, but eight months later Hitler focused his attention to the Netherlands and he took control very quickly. In Amsterdam the Nazis placed strict restrictions on the Jewish population, banning them from freedoms that anyone would take as a given. They were banned from even owning telephones and were later banned from participating in organised sport and sport clubs. This policy in particular affected Eddie Hamill as he was no longer allowed to coach 
and soon part of the city of Amsterdam became a Jewish ghetto, where Jews were forced to live in horrific conditions, surrounded by barbed wire in a prison. Eddie Hamill, his wife and their children, were living across the town in a second floor flat, close to where Anne Frank and her family lived. Hamill continued to play football in defiance to the Nazi rules, turning out for a legends team called Lucky Ajax, whilst the German occupation happened. On October 27, 1942, he was stopped by two police officers who served with the German Affairs Department in the Amsterdam Police, who were collaborating with the Nazis. Hamill stated that he told the officers he was born in New York, but then was arrested and had been caught in public without wearing the Jewish star. He stated he was a coach, and it has been alleged that he was actually betrayed. Eddie Hamill, along with his family and children, were rounded up and taken to a detention centre before being transported to Vesterbork, a transit camp 100 miles northeast of Amsterdam. Vesterbork was where Jews were kept before being transported to the death camps, and here Hamill met Leon Greenman, a bookseller born in London. Greenman's account of what happened to Hamill has helped to tell his story. The prisoners were informed that they were to be sent to Poland to work for the Germans. They arrived in Auschwitz and the family was split up. They had been transported on the train and when they arrived at Auschwitz, Hamill had not eaten for three days. His first meal was a herb soup with black coloured leaves and he survived on the occasional scrap of bread, raw potato or anything he could find. He was being starved to death and was kept in a barracks filled with a thousand men. Greenman and Hamill shared a bunk on the highest level and this had no mattress on it. The temperature in the winter was horrific and Hamill and Greenman spoke about their roots with Hamill being an American citizen. Together they agreed not to speak about the women and children who were on the train with them and they noticed the smoke coming from the chimneys of the crematoria and they convinced themselves they were just factories ignoring the true evil of what was occurring. Together the men worked hard in the snow and it was noted that Eddie Hamill was always a gentleman. It's considered that if Hamill had outlined his American citizenship to guards, then chances are he would have been taken elsewhere and treated better than he was. In today's world, Eddie Hamill would have also been recognised, but inside Auschwitz to the Germans, he was just another prisoner. Three months after arriving at the camp, Hamill along with his barrack were taken into a room and were forced to strip naked. They stepped forward one by one and were examined by a doctor. They were being inspected to see if they were healthy to continue working, and if they were not, they were then taken to the gas chambers to be murdered. Shortly before this, Eddie Hamill spoke to Greenman and told him he had a swelling and an abscess in his mouth, which was rather noticeable. After the inspection, Eddie Hamill was taken away, and Leon Greenman never saw him again. Eddie Hamill was then taken from the rooms to be taken to the gas chambers, as he was deemed not fit enough to continue to work. He would have been rounded up with hundreds of other prisoners and then marched to the chambers before being forced to strip and then step into the execution chamber. Inside, hundreds were locked in and within minutes the Zyklon B gas would have been administered and Eddie Hamill was killed. The Germans logged his date of death as the 30th of April 1943 but the SS often waited until the last day of each month to close accounts and records of those who had been murdered. Eddie Hamill died not knowing, also, that his wife and sons had been murdered within just hours of their arrival at Auschwitz. They were taken straight off the train and then sent straight to the gas chambers for their death. Records stated that the day Hamill arrived at the camp, two other trains carrying 5,000 Jews arrived, and of these, 4,500 were sent straight to the gas chambers and were killed. Eddie Hamill was a talented and skilled footballer who in today's world would probably have made a lot of money in the modern footballing world. However, during the 1920s when he made his name, he was seen as a hero to many people living within Amsterdam. He gave people hope and pride in their city, heritage and club. However, to the Nazis, he was simply just another Jew, who they deemed needed to be wiped off the face of the earth. He was clearly a very celebrated footballer, and also a man who was devoted to his family, his coaching and helping other people. Eddie Hamill's death inside Auschwitz would be one of just the 1.1 million people murdered inside of the camp.
Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.